In this video, I'd like to show you another example of an equivalent style proof. This time, I want to prove that P implies Q implies P. Hmm, how am I going to use an equivalent style proof here when there is no equivalence? Well, wait a second. What am I trying to prove, actually? I'm trying to prove that this is a tautology, which means it's equivalent to true. So what I need to do is look at this entire expression and use my basic equivalences to show that this simplifies, or I can manipulate it, so that it's just the predicate true. So I'm going to start with the entire predicate. First step, I have implications here, two of them. So I'm going to apply the law of implication. And I'm going to write this as not P or this expression. And in fact, I'm going to use law of implication twice here. And I'm going to say that this predicate is equivalent to not P or this expression, which is not Q or P. Now, there are a couple ways I could proceed here. So I'm going to actually show you two different proofs. I'm going to first just go through the one that I have written here, and then I'll show you one I think is a little faster. I'd like to simplify this, and I think one of the ways I could simplify this is to notice something like P or not P is true, and maybe that will help me out. But I don't have the P and not P anywhere near one another right now. So one thing I could do is switch the order in this disjunction and write this as by commutativity not P or P or not Q. And then what I'd like to do is to associate the P and the not P instead of the P with the not Q. And so by associativity, I know disjunction is associative. So this is equivalent to not P or P or not Q. Now, I know that P or not P by excluded middle is true, but I don't have things in that form but I could rearrange and write this as P or not P by the commutative property. And then I have things in the form of excluded middle, and I could say this is true. So this is equivalent to true or not Q, some expression. Well, I could use or simplification, but, but or simplification is about an expression or true. So it's not in the right order. But I can, again, rearrange and write this by the commutative property as not Q or true. And not Q or true is true. So it is the case that this is a tautology. Now notice I was very careful and made sure that I had things in the right order and right grouping in order to develop this proof. Sometimes we get a little sloppy when our proofs get a little bit more complicated, but it's good practice to make sure that you put the puzzle pieces together in a way where you actually make sure that you have right orders at least whenever you're first starting this proof style. Let's try another um, different arrangement of the proof. If I started off with P implies Q implies P, I could still use implication. I'm just going to use the implication symbol 
times 2 and then end up with not P or not Q or P here. But notice what I'd like to do is to somehow regroup and reorder so that the P and the not P are together. These are together right now. I know I could actually use the commutative property and switch the order of this expression and this entire expression right here. So instead of switching these two, I could switch this expression and this expression. And I would have come up with not Q or P or not P. And then if I want to regroup, I can use associativity again. And this is equivalent to not Q or P or not P. Now the advantage of doing this is I don't have to switch the order. This is already in the right order to apply excluded middle. So I have not Q or true. And again, I don't have to switch the order. It's in the exact right order so that I can apply or simplification. And this is equivalent to true. So it turns out that using this method gave me a, a shorter proof than my original. Which one is better? Well, it doesn't really matter. So there's more than one way often to come up with an equivalent style proof, more than one um, actual proof.